Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to learn about rigid bodies, colliders, and physics in Bevy. The goal is to introduce gravity and collision physics in our game. Along the way, we would learn the Bevy Rapier 2D crate, rigid bodies and its types, colliders. Let's start by spawning the two shapes we need, the ball and the rectangle. We had spawned this rectangle in the previous video. This will be our base platform on which the ball drops. Now let's create the actual ball itself. Very similar to the rectangle, but instead of quad, we use a circle. We set the radius of the ball and we change the y coordinate of it to be above our rectangle so that it can fall on it. So we have a circle and a rectangle on the screen. No physics at this point. So to add physics, we use the rapier 2D library. We go to Crates.io, search for Bevy Rapier 2D, copy the cargo thermal snippet and paste it. We import the preload module from the Bevy Rapier 2D crate. Now we need to add the Rapier configuration resource. In the previous videos, we discussed using images and sound assets as resources. We can use global configurations as resources too. Since this configuration is global throughout the Bevy app, and since we need only one instance of this configuration, resources are the right place to have this. Let's add gravity. Here we are specifying that the gravity is in the y direction. That is top to bottom. Let's set the value as negative 980. The negative sign implies that gravity moves downwards. We need to add the repair physics plugin. This sets up the physics simulation pipeline. Pixels per meter is how many pixels on your screen would map to one meter in the real world. Next, we move on to rigid bodies. These are the kinds of rigid bodies in Rapier. First is dynamic. Dynamic rigid bodies are those which are affected by external forces. External forces could be either a force like gravity, or it could be a force transferred when another object comes in contact with it. We want the ball to be a dynamic rigid body since we want it to be impacted by gravity and we want it to stop when it comes in contact with the platform. Fixed rigid bodies are not affected by external forces. The objects do not move no matter what force is applied on it. We want the platform to be a fixed rigid body since we do not want the platform to move due to gravity. Whenever another object comes in contact with the platform, we do not want the platform to move based on the force of the ball. Hence, this is a fixed rigid body. The next two are kinematic rigid bodies. 
You can think of these as similar to fixed rigid bodies in the sense that they aren't affected by external forces. However, here we can write code to move the object around ourselves. Let's say this wasn't a stationary platform, but instead we wanted the platform to move right and left within a specific range. We would use kinematic bodies and move this object within a specific x and y coordinate range. Velocity-based kinematic rigid bodies are kind of similar. The only difference is instead of controlling the location or position, we control the velocity instead. The position is determined from the previous position and its velocity. So earlier we had defined a mesh as the boundary or shape of an object. Colliders are another type of boundary, but for object contact or collision purposes. Colliders and meshes can be of different shapes if needed. One can be a square and one can be a rectangle. They can also have the same shape but different dimensions. Why would we have different shapes for colliders and meshes? One is for performance. Let's say we have a mesh which looks like this and well, it's a pretty complicated boundary. Computing collision or contact on this object can be very complex and take up a lot of our system resources. So how do we solve this? We create a collider which is much simpler in shape and does not affect the game feel. In some cases, a simple rectangle can do the job for us. Second is behavior. We have a bunch of rocks which block a player from entering a zone. Based on the arrangement of the rocks, we could end up having scenarios where the player finds some gaps which aren't supposed to be there. Instead of having a complex collider shape, which provides less predictability for issues like these, we can use rectangle colliders. Since the rectangle is a much simpler shape, it will be easier to stack up these rocks without having to worry about such gaps. Ok, now that we've understood rigid bodies and colliders, let's code them up. So we add a dynamic rigid body to the ball. We keep the same radius of 15. The platform is a fixed rigid body. The values are defined by half extents. So both X and Y should be half of the actual lens. Here the mesh and the collider is of the same shape, but as mentioned previously, that need not always be the case. This is the Bevy syntax where we can add multiple components to an entity. We place the components inside a second pair of round braces. We can see both rigid body and collider derive component. So they are components to our two entities. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.